So a piece of equipment here has different components. We want to make sure we understand where those are because we're going to need to know where these parts are when we do our inspections and we look at the functioning of this equipment. So we have what we call the mass, which you've already talked about. It's the part that houses um, the carriage, the forks, uh, the hydraulic system, and lifting chain, and that's the mechanism that lifts everything. So the mass is one of the strongest parts of it. You obviously got your frame that's on the bottom, you got your engine compartment along with what we consider our counterweights on the back side. If you notice that there is an overhead protection, anytime you have overhead protection in any equipment, no matter what you're doing, it should be equipped with the seatbelt. So that means you should be staying inside the confines of the forklift. So if there is a rollover of some sort, if you stay within it, the rollover protection is going to help you, uh, keep you from getting squashed, crushed, and uh, the seatbelt will keep you from getting out, uh, falling out of it and getting smashed by the equipment if it does roll over like that. So there is a name plate on every equipment. Plate gives you the information that you need. Just like anything else, when you start doing something, you have to have as much information as you can so you can do it safely. And for us, we need to understand, number one, what we're picking up so we know what the weight is. And then number two, if our equipment is strong enough to pick it up. The second part of it will be discovered here in our nameplate. Okay, and our nameplate says this is the type of equipment that it is, the manufacturer, the serial number to it, what's the capacity of the equipment, what's the weight of the equipment as well. So the nameplate will have that and then it will also give you the capacity, the maximum capacity. Along with the plate, you got to understand that there is a owner's manual that needs to be within your equipment all the time. And when you are doing your inspection along with finding the nameplate, finding your capacities, it's finding where this is and understanding what it means and how it's written. Okay, You have to at least have a capacity to understand where to look for this information and to have, if you have a question, understand it's your duty as an operator to review this and understand what the answer is to your question if you need to. When we get into the actual physicals of the actual forklift and capacities and capabilities, those kind of things. We have to understand what the stability triangle means. We have to determine the load center of gravity first. Remember I told you, we need to know what we're picking up. We need to know if our equipment can pick it up. And if that's the case and they match up well, then we need to start looking into center of gravity of the load. Okay, where is the center of gravity of the load? Where does that sit? Because that needs to be as close as possible to our mast any object that we pick up, this has to be in the center of those forks or less. So essentially, the center of gravity should be at two foot or less to the mass. If you start growing outside of this two foot span, the, the forks are four feet, remember? Two foot is the center. If you start developing a little further, the object is a little bigger or longer, then naturally your center of gravity starts pushing out, which then creates our issue as far as calculation what's our capacity going to be now, now that we're pushing out a little further. So let's talk about that real quick. First of all, we want to make sure that we see that the balance, the front part, which is actually our fulcrum or our tipping point is in between the two wheels. Okay. Now I'm going to jump ahead real quick and answer a question real quick before we get to it. But when you add outriggers to forklifts, Typically, the outriggers are a little bit further out in front of the tires. And what that creates is now you have a little bit of more leverage, more distance. Your triangle gets a little bit bigger when your outriggers are out here. So then your triangle grows where the outriggers are, which ultimately creates a little bit more capacity. So as you look, there's two different dots on here. Okay. So when we go unloaded, when it's unloaded, the stability is right in the middle. It's a little bit behind the front wheels a little bit. And as we add weight to it, naturally the stability or the center of gravity of this particular object starts moving forward. So for here, we put a load on it, it starts moving forward, but it doesn't pass, it doesn't pass our stability triangle. It goes from here, it moves forward the more weight we have. So what that means is as long as we stay within our capacities of weight and distance, that center of gravity will not be out of the stability triangle. So here's a quick um, snapshot of it, okay? Without a load, your center of gravity is pretty much in the middle. With a maximum load, you start moving it towards the front of the fork and the mass. Now, if you unstable where you offset the load where maybe you're a little bit further forward or maybe you have a larger object that's not in the center of the forks, 
and your center of gravity goes out. Now all of a sudden you start moving your load and it starts being out in front of your stability triangle which then causes some issues with stability and then you have overextension, overreach and you start having tipping and accidents when it comes to that. So you gotta be careful about that. Here's a great diagram of how a 5,000 pound object, that center of gravity at 24 inches, it's not a big deal. But as you move it out, if he sets it and doesn't grab it properly when he picks it up and it's a little further out on his forks, it creates a line here where the center of gravity does not pass over here. It starts passing outside. And what that creates is obviously a force to pull the forklift forward and that's where the accidents happen. So we need to be careful about keeping that within the confines of the stability triangle within the front wheels um, and that all has to do with your capacities, making sure you're not picking up too much. Okay, and that really makes a difference when you calculate that first before you start using it. Now there is, now that you know the fundamentals of where the balance should be, where we should put the loads, how you should have them sitting, what the, what the uh, diagrams look like as far as the principles for stability triangle, now we have to look into operations. Now you have what you consider a momentum. Now momentum can create different obstacles for you when you're driving. When you're driving a forklift, you can naturally go forward and what we call dynamic loading is when you stop abruptly and the momentum of your load continues forward and then you have a tip over issue. So in this particular case, when you look at this picture, um, the guy's driving forward with the load up. Right now he's already compromised by being up and the, the, the center of gravity is a little bit closer to his fulcrum. If he were to easily stop on a dime or stop quickly, because of a, an individual walking in front of him, he could tip over easily. Now, continuing with what we consider our operations, okay? Remember, if you're getting close to maximum capacity, okay? That's probably one of the catchphrases here. If you understand you're getting close to maximum capacity, you gotta be even more careful about how you travel, how you're moving, what the momentum, what the motions are, because that will make a difference on how you get from point A to point B. If you look at these two pictures right here, the larger of the two is on the back. Now, it's hard to say right now if one of these weighs a little more or not, but let's assume this one weighs more than the little one. If the, if the larger one weighs more, then you naturally want to put it towards the center of gravity, more towards the counterweight. If you flip them around, do it backwards, now you've got the weight, the larger amount of weight up front, and now you're pushing it out towards past the center of the forks, which then creates an issue for center of gravity. Now when you go up with it, um, the center of gravity is going to push out past the wheels. Same with this, configuration of your load. If you have a long load, a skinny load, or a flat load and a long one, you wanna go up and down uh, with the higher part as best you can, uh, make it vertical, and not lay it down horizontal where the load is too long and it reaches out front. Um, as you're moving the load, make sure that, um, number one, you understand the capacities, but that you also lean it back. Travel with the, the mass tilted backwards to keep it stable. Do not lean with the load forward. The load forward will flop off and, top and fall off the front of you, okay? If you're driving on an incline, if you are driving up a hill, up an incline with a load, and you are able to see, the load should be up. If you're driving downhill with a load, and it's a very serious incline, you should drive backwards with the load at the top end. Um, if there is no, um, no load on the forklifts, um, drive uphill backwards, then drive hit downhill with the forks facing down, okay? So these are a few reasons why we look and we see tip overs, driving too fast around the corners. Um, very simply put, three or four inches of the edge of a concrete slab or a platform or other surface can make a huge difference in the tipping over. It only takes a moment or a little bit to tip over. Trying to drive an indoor forklift, like we talked about at the very beginning, the ones that don't have very clear, very good clearance or very smooth flat tires for indoor, don't use them outdoors because they will get stuck, maybe they'll sink, and then obviously turn it on an incline or a hill. It's a very a big no-no. In the case of a tip over, do not jump out. Okay? If there is a tip over, don't jump out. Fasten your seatbelt all the time. It's pretty much a standard process to have forklifts with rollover and seatbelt. Hold on tight to the steering wheel, brace yourself. If you are gonna impact to the right, brace yourself to the left so you don't whip into the right and hit the ground or wherever you are. And lean forward, tuck yourself. Do not try to stick your arms out, try to protect yourself. 
stay tight, stay within the piece of equipment. In the event of a fire or some kind of an explosion or something like that, be consider removing yourself from the equipment, but you have to also consider that it's not gonna be in jeopardy of getting crushed by the equipment itself. As you look through it, okay, seat belts are very important. For all forklifts uh, after 1992 should be retrofitted for, 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 or for uh, seat belts and click it before you drive, guys. It's very important. Common cause of fatalities is people not wearing a seatbelt and falling out of it, getting getting crushed by it, those kind of things, okay?